Hi, we just finished watching the movie School Number Three, and now we have our guest Ksenia Marchenko, who is a journalist who lives in the Ukraine. Ksenia, could you tell us more about yourself? Uh, hello, my name is Ksenia Marchenko. I'm Ukrainian journalist. Uh, I work for uh, Ukrainian web media Hromatsky UA. It is uh, this media uprised during Maidan Revolution, and this media is the only one media who propose uh, some alternative information in Ukraine and we are not about propaganda and we try to discuss uh, political situation as well as cultural problems in, in our country. And how did you get interested in filmmaking and film in general? Mm -hmm. uh, after I got a master's degree in journalism at Kiev Mohila Academy in Ukraine, I was working for news for three years uh, and that period was the period before Maidan. Uh, in the period of Maidan and, and when the war started and uh, I realized that uh, this serious situation which happened in Ukraine, war and uh, transformation, political transformation and cultural trans transformation, they, it gives us so much stories to tell and uh, uh, that's why I started filming by myself. Uh, at the daytime I was doing use and sometimes in the evening or when I have breaks I was filming my, my own stories uh, and uh, mm, two years ago uh, I started documentary photo project and also some episodes uh, uh, which deals with uh, nationalistic movement in Ukraine. Um, I film uh, street actions. Uh, street marchers of nationalistic organization which also uprised after Maidan and for me it's interesting how they transform uh, public sphere for political reasons. Um, knowing the current situation in Ukraine, the fact that some social media are banned, how do you think um, the youth should communicate with each other, should uh, become peaceful with each other without having the social media with, like within them. Uh, to say the truth, we have strange situation with social media in Ukraine because uh, Vkontakte, for example, uh, it's some kind of uh, Facebook, but Russian version of Facebook. Uh, it is full of uh, uh, some pirate music uh, films, uh, uh, and uh, that's why it was attractive for a lot of children, for a lot of adults, and. Uh, I as well had this page at Vkontakte, uh, but I use it just for listening music or maybe searching for some nice public, uh, because it turns to the story that uh, Vkontakte was some kind of library, you, you can find everything. But as well, uh, it was full of propaganda, uh, and it was full of trash, of anti-Ukrainian trash, and the uh, official position of this banning was that uh, Vkontakte, Adnoklasniki, some uh, Russian um, Russian maps, uh, they can control information uh, which people spread uh, in the social media. Uh, and uh, but you know that uh, we can change VPN and use or this uh, contact uh, and as a social media, and it works in, in that way that uh, if you want, you can do it. Um, the huge discussion started in Ukraine because of this question. Uh, Mm, but still, it's not just we have this possibility to communicate with different people. Uh, it, it, it more this topic is more about political control in the country and how this control will change attitude to people uh, who are more into contact, for example, and not in Facebook because Facebook in Ukraine uh, is more for some intelligent people who want to discuss some serious topics mm -hmm. and Vkontakte is just for fun. Mm -hmm. But you know Vkontakte is really full of uh, full of aggressive information anti-Ukrainian mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I don't know, it, it's um, my one my friend, uh, uh, he was a great photographer, he was killed at war and when um, in several days after that killing, uh, his uh, um, profile mm -hmm. uh, at Vkontakte uh, was full of uh, aggressive information, uh, some Photoshop pictures with him and with his family, mm -hmm. and um, it was done by bots, trolls, uh, and they really harm a lot of people, close people who, who want to say some nice words for, for him. So is it hard to express your opinion and have like, is it hard to be able to say what you want without being scared of the consequences? In Ukraine? Yes, in Ukraine. No, we have... 
uh, as I'm a journalist uh, uh, and um, a person who communicate with a lot of people from different ages uh, and generations, I can say that we have uh, quite uh, uh, open situation we can discuss everything and Facebook in that case works uh, uh, in better way because uh, uh, anytime when you have some uh, unclear topics you, you may write everything you want uh, and uh, a lot of people will come to your page uh, and uh, write uh, their uh, arguments on this topic uh, of course we have some problems with uh, like a year ago uh, famous Ukrainian uh, journalist he was killed uh, in the street and it turned to that case that, uh, okay, we don't know still who, who um, organizes, uh, uh, but uh, it's about freedom of speech in Ukraine. Um, if you had the chance to talk to Ukrainian youth right now and tell them something or um, what do you in general predict in a couple of years what will happen to the new generation that is coming right now? I think that these uh, events which happened in Ukraine uh, during Maidan revolution, the revolution of dignity and uh, the war is still in Ukraine and uh, this war is supported by Russians and we, a lot of people know about that, journalists who works in this area knows uh, that uh, they saw such people, some emblems of, uh, of soldiers, uh, so there is not the question that uh, are there any Russians or no, they are. Um, but the situation changed a lot. The country, the idea of uh, of nation, maybe. Like, it's some general words, but still, um, mm, the main result of, of these events is that people are interested in each other and they uh, try to help each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that uh, this feeling of community, uh, it have mm, have very nice consequences because we are interested in each other, we want to help each other, we want to produce some uh, artistic projects together and we are ready to discuss what, what we feel. And that's why this film, School Number 3, I, uh, I think uh, it is powerful because of discussing what we feel, mm -hmm. uh, not sitting, crying, uh, keeping uh, inside of us some sorts. We are telling these stories and it is very important. Just do, feel, do and uh, mm, be interested in as a person. Do you feel like, for example, movies like School Number Three make also, um, should be made to make the outside world aware of what's happening to in in, UK, in Ukraine, how it looks there? Like, do you think it's an effective way to reach, like, for example, Polish youth who doesn't who's not really aware of the situation and what's happening? Mm -hmm. In general, I think that films uh, it is uh, an easy way to tell the story, very hard story, but um, the most important, as I said, what we feel when such things happening. And uh, film uh, school number three gives us stories of uh, 13 typical Ukrainian school children, teenagers, uh, who saw a lot of uh, harmful uh, situation, maybe uh, you know, some some of uh, friends of, of these uh, characters, they were killed because of war, and uh, still, uh, like these children, they know much, much more, even uh, as our parents know. And uh, uh, the scene is that uh, will this generation be lost, or will this generation be ready to act? and transform the society, a small group of people, uh, and create something new. And um, this project is amazing with that. Uh, they are acting in uh, the theater of displaced people. And the directors of the film School Number 3, they are uh, heading this uh, theater uh, in Kyiv. And it's also the place where people can discuss what they feel. All right, thank you so much for interviewing with us and talking to us. And we invite all of you to watch the very emotional school number three um, at Kinov Trampka. Thank you.